Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad. Folks, you can read Teddy's outstanding Tiger Forex report. He puts out new issues every week, updates throughout the week when warranted. He's got a couple webinars in there as well. You can check it out on the front page of TFNN, the Tiger Forex report, right under the newsletter tab. You subscribe, folks. It's $97. It comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Bit of a pullback from the trends we've had going on, but let's jump into the action. Teddy Kegstad, here, man. Good morning, Tommy. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Uh, listen, we had a great discussion last week. Kind of some of what we talked about is coming to fruition this week. Uh, now that we've gotten, you know, a little bit of a pullback, we got the 10-year yield maybe at 4%, right? We got the dollar index popping above 102. Um, what do you think about some of this market action? Where do you want to kick things off, Teddy? Uh, well, I think we, you know, this is perfect uh, from transition from last week to this week. Everything that we talked about has pretty much come true. So um, I think that as far as yields, I like them right now. I think you had a nice profit taking move, you know, over the past few sessions. Um, it's you got to realize that, you know, the interest rate market has been rallying since the middle of October. So the fact that we've pulled back a couple points in the 10 year and in the bonds, well, it's not a surprise, that's for sure, you know. So um, the question is, is it going to continue? And I think we might be at that buy the rumor, sell the fact kind of stage right now. So whether this is a correction um, in the long-term basis, what we've been viewing, or is it time for a short-term correction before this new trend continues? I think we're in that situation where we have two situations that we're more likely to sell off, meaning – interest rates should go a little bit higher over the next couple of weeks or so, you know, which gives strength to the dollar. You're seeing that in the dollar index and also some of the major currencies, like you've seen the U.S. dollar Canada get a really good bounce since we talked last week. Obviously, the euro U.S. dollar has sold off pretty strong, you know, and I think it's kind of interesting, too, because I heard you talking about Bitcoin and Coinbase and Bitcoin, especially if you look at the rally that it's had, it's kind of ironic. The bond market bottomed out in October. So did Bitcoin. And Bitcoin has now started to falter and top out as the interest rate market is looking at least for a short term correction. You know, so it's kind of funny how those two are kind of trading in tandem right now. Um, I'm not saying that they're going to continue to do so, but it does seem that right now as <clears throat> money was coming out in that way, as far as where, is, where can big money go, and especially in that market, you're looking at whales in the Bitcoin market, you know. And then you have the ETF stuff that we're talking about. These are all things that are going to have more interest, you know. So um, I think that's part of the run-up. I think there is some sort of a correlation there. So I would watch that. So it would be interesting to see if we actually could compress this move to the upside as far as yields, meaning lower trading bond and 10-year prices. Um, now, today, I would watch it because we've had a nice profit-taking move. And if you look at the short terms, <clears throat> the ones in two, the, the two-year and five-year haven't really moved. The 10 years at a good to one to almost three relationship. And when you have that relationship between those two, the 10 year and the 30 year, you have to watch the 10 year because if the 10 years net doesn't continue to tick lower, it's going to be hard for the bonds to stretch any much low, much more lower today because there's usually not more of a spread than one to three. It's more between two to one to between two to one and uh, three to one for the spread between those two as far as how many ticks you'll be up or down in any given day. You know, because <clears throat> one of the reasons those relationships exist is because there are spreads between those markets, which futures traders would understand. I don't know how many of your viewers know about future spreads between interest rate markets. So I don't even want to get into that one. Um, but I think nice. that's what you're seeing as far as what's going on with the dollar. So pay attention to that, especially your Bitcoin traders. Um, and then I did hear you talk about Coinbase. And I think that the sell-off that you're seeing in Coinbase, I don't know if your readers or followers that are following crypto know that, you know, <clears throat> they had the ruling that came out last week about um, SBF, how they're no longer going to go after him criminally for all the money that was taken out of the company and given to political donations, which no company should be giving customer funds to, as a donation to anybody to begin with. You know, that's fraud in itself. You know, so the fact that they're doing that, waiving that, means that, well, well, if some other crypto company does that or any company does that now, that means that's a precedent. We're not going to go after you for that. So that's a way to definitely slush money out of a company that now is now going to be a precedent. OK, then you also have the whole thing with BlockFi that expired as of um, the, the, the first of the year for people who aren't familiar with what's going on with BlockFi. They're settling all the funds of customers, of which I am one of them. Um, I'm going to supposedly get a check for cash value of some of the crypto that is left. Um, it's going to be like basically less than pennies on the dollar. So for what I'm getting back out of a couple grand, I think I'm going to get like 
I don't know, maybe ten dollars, twelve dollars, something oh, like that. Sorry, man. You that know, so so that also yeah. proves to you that crypto companies. <laughs> there's a big problem because how sure. do you transfer money where they have a custodial agreement but I thought your wallet is on uh, you can't break into that that's all yours so obviously that whole theory is out the window um, the fact that once they have it it's almost like that South Park episode when they're at the bank it's like here's my money thank you very much how, uh, how much do I have left you're done <laughs> it's I, gone. I, the it's moment gone. you said the it's South gone. Park episode you know? and it's gone it's gone right? and it's and gone, it's gone. Yeah, I, exactly. I, listen, I know so, and I think that's what's happening with Coinbase because anyone that knows about those companies realizes that. And then I'm also, I have with Nexio also another company, uh, barely any of the assets that I had put in there originally are there anymore. So that's two crypto oh, houses. That's why I always tell people, spread your money out between brokerage houses because you never know if one goes down. Well, here you yeah. have two that definitely were acting nefariously. <laughs> so, yeah, right. Out of the ones that were promoted as the top compliant sure. ones in the industry by the yeah. financial industry as well. So that scares me when it comes to this whole ETF thing and stuff that's being launched as well. So, but right. you can, I would watch the yields, um, see how that does maybe wag the tail of Bitcoin, if you will. And I think that, yeah, you're going to see a little bit of dollar strength short term. And here's something you got to think about too is oil, how this is going to come into play over the next couple of years. We're in an election year, and I wouldn't doubt it if Biden doesn't reverse what he did on his first day of office to the oil industry. But how do you combat what's going on with the BRICS and stuff like that? Saudi Arabia just joined BRICS. So that means they're going to be doing most of their petrol transactions in other currencies. So how do you fight that? Well, you can't fight that. If we're not going to be raising interest rates, what's the other thing we could do? The only thing we can do is pump a ton of oil, a ton of oil. I mean, pump, turn those pumps on so strong to keep the market below where it's at, where it's at or lower, because what would that do? It lessens the demand for other currencies. So that helps to keep the BRICS currencies down in value. So I think you might see a commodity-driven currency war developing over the next six months. We'll see. I don't know. It could actually be like just it. a theory that comes out of nowhere in my head sometimes. But no. the way things are looking right now, you know, if it acts like a dog and it walks like a dog, it probably is a dog. You know, right? Say, dude, crude's at seventy-one dollars, right? We got wars breaking out in the Middle East everywhere, and so yeah. something's going on there, man. So I appreciate. Yeah. You how does the oil wisdom. go down? How does oil go down right now with wars in the Middle East all over the Seriously, place? Seriously, right? I was talking to Kevin yesterday. I said the same thing. We were talking about crude and i said you know can you imagine right you're, you're bullish on crude and you see the headlines coming out you know whether iran sending warships out to the red sea and then you watch the price mm -hmm. of crude drop literally as that's happening so as you said it's happening it walks like a dog man pay attention right right teddy i appreciate the time as always man that was a quick nine minutes i mm -hmm. uh, appreciate you joining the program folks check out the tiger forex report he's got a couple great webinars under the services tab as well Teddy, I appreciate it as always. We'll talk to you next week, man. Thanks, Tommy. Take care, guys. Thank you. We'll be right back, folks. Stay tuned.